Hi, this is Serv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today I'm going to go on a bit of a rant. I hate these micro SD files. I hate them because they're just too small. Can't see it, can you? It's probably hard for the camera to focus on it. It's just too small. In today's 3D printing world, very often you download a model or create a model in a CAD program that's in STL format. You load that into a slicer that then converts it into G-code. You copy that G-code file onto an SDL card using an adapter in your laptop, in your PC, in your Mac. You walk it over to your printer. You try to put this into a slot on the side of your printer. The slot is too small to see. If you're of my generation, you have to either put on your reading glasses or take off your long distance glasses. It's not enough light. I hate these things. So I've been looking for the perfect solution for Wi-Fi printing directly to any of my printers. I have three printers. I want one solution that works with all three. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the things I've learned. Stay tuned. Let's learn something together. After looking at the websites for Astroprint and Octoprint, I really wanted to like Astroprint. Let me tell you why. While this channel has a variety of content for makers with an emphasis on 3D printing, a bit of woodworking, some electronics in the future, its focus, my niche, is helping baby boomers, new retirees, gain skills in the maker community world. Skills they can use to enrich their life, maybe to make a little money, to help their grandchildren, to bond across the generations. So I was looking for a solution that was very, very easy to install, even if you don't have sophisticated computer skills. Estoprint looked perfect. I went to the website. The instructions for, um, Installing an AstroBox are plug in the box, wait for it to boot up, connect to the AstroBox Wi-Fi network, open your browser, point it at 10.10.0.1, follow the instructions. Sounds great. So I went ahead and I downloaded the image. I put it on an SD card. I followed the instructions. I inserted it into my Raspberry Pi. I turned it on and I looked for the hotspot. Nada, nothing, no AstroBox hotspot. I did a little Googling around and I discovered that, oh, you can't just use a Raspberry Pi with Wi-Fi. You need to plug an extra Wi-Fi adapter into a USB port on your Raspberry Pi because you need two Wi-Fi devices. One so the AstroBox can become a hotspot in essence, a Wi-Fi router, and the second so that it can communicate with your network as part of the configuration. Well, I didn't have a second adapter for my AstroBox, so I found there's an alternative way to do this. You plug an Ethernet connection in to your network, into the AstroBox, you go into their desktop app, you use that to configure a device. Great, that worked. I configured the device, I tried it out on my Prusa printer, it was able to see it. I wasn't really um, excited with the quality of the information they had about the different printers. It appears that when you add a printer, all it adds is the bed and maybe some minor temperature settings. It wasn't highly customized, but it looked like it was going to be interesting. I disconnected my ethernet cable. I went to connect to my Wi-Fi again Nada, nothing. It wouldn't find my Wi-Fi. I did a little more Googling around and I found that their device doesn't really work well if you have a single Wi-Fi network that has both a 2.4 and a 5 megahertz connection. Well, that's what I have. And my routers in the house are sort of complex. I use the Eero system, so I have three different routers forming a mesh network. I was going to have to create a dedicated Wi-Fi network just to use the AstroBox. Failed my test. I was looking for something easy. 
so I tried one more test. I went online to their site. I ordered a pre-configured AstroBox. I thought it would come fully assembled. Instead, what I got was a Raspberry Pi, a micro SD card that was preloaded, a case of power supply. I had to do a little bit of assembly, five minutes. If you can do IKEA furniture, you could do this. Plugged it in, same problem. Still would not work reliably with my network. So then I configured it the more complex way. Um, I left it plugged in. I had it up and running at that point. And I attempted to connect my Monoprice Select Mini to AstroPrint. Wouldn't connect. I connect, attempted to connect it to the AstroPrint desktop. Wouldn't connect. Did some Googling around. There were complaints on the network that Monoprice doesn't follow the protocol just right. So just for the heck of it, I took the AstroPrint hardware, the Raspberry Pi, the box, the power supply that they had shipped, and I inserted an OctaPrint micro SD card in it booted right up. Went to connect, still didn't connect to the Monoprice, but in a very quick Google, I found there's a plugin for OptiPi, OctaPrint, that allows it to work with the Monoprice that understands their protocol. Loaded the plugin, bam, up and running. So while I was looking for a very easy solution with AstroPrint, in fact, it's not quite there yet. So why have I grown to really love OctaPrint, specifically OctaPi, which is the pre-configured image you put on a micro SD card, put into your Raspberry Pi? Well, for a couple reasons. The first reason I really like OctaPrint is it works. It just seems to work. It's very reliable, it's very easy. Yes, the installation could be easier, and I'll be producing a video. There are many videos on installing OctaPrint, but I'll be producing a video specifically for folks that aren't techies. I'm going to see if I can find... <coughs> I'll be producing a video specifically for people that aren't techies. I'll see if I can find just the right combination of utilities that work on both a Mac and a PC, that's a set of simple instructions so anybody can configure and set up OctaPrint. Number two, a huge community of users. That means with a few moments of Googling, you can find the solution to many, many problems. Number three, a robust plugin community. Plugins for OctaPrint are written in Python. That means that um, you don't have to be an overly sophisticated programmer to participate in the community. So OctaPrint is my go-to solution. I'll probably try AstroPrint again at some point in the future with the next release. But for right now, I find OctaPrint serves my needs, is reliable, has a robust community of users. Okay, thanks for listening to my bit of a rant. And I hope this was helpful. Please, if it was, like this video. It's important. Your likes help me with YouTube. If there are more likes, YouTube tends to highlight the video, promote it a bit more. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, leave me comments. I want this to be an interactive channel where we can chat together about becoming a maker of the skills of 3D printing, woodworking, electronics for people of all ages but in particular, for those of us that are newly retired, looking for the next challenge. Thanks again. Let's continue learning things together.